Oh, dear. All right, let's see how this goes. Hello and welcome to episode 42 of Oh Dear, presented by Bo's Bar and Stage. Coming to you, as always, from Communal Creative Studios in the heart of downtown Red Deer. Uh, I'm Ted Emmett. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. Uh, this episode going to be a little bit different for a couple of reasons. Uh, but first and foremost, after a perfect attendance record through 41 episodes for the first time in the history of Oh Dear, there will be no Ryan Lund on this episode. Episode. Uh, he's fine. Uh, we wouldn't blame you if you turned the episode off uh, right now. But I think we all know Lund brings a certain something to this podcast that could never be replaced. Part of that something is like an extra hour or two of editing time for me. So I'm not too worried about that. But uh, he couldn't make it tonight. And quite frankly, the point of there being so many of us is that we're not going to reschedule to try and, and have everyone make it. Uh, that being said, though, Dustin and Walsh were both supposed to make it tonight. Uh, that's why we picked tonight. They both bailed, but hey, that's okay. Uh, will it be the same without Lund? Definitely not. Will this still be a great episode? None of them are, so it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about who is here because we're still going to have a lot of fun tonight. Uh, back at the table once again, actually putting together a pretty decent attendance record himself is the athlete Kevin Strybosch, uh, really making a great impression as the new guy on this uh, podcast. And they, they, again, just yeah, like a, the, the steady guy now. Somebody's got to have a role, and I figured out what my role is. And with everybody missing, I got to take the Kevin spot, and I'm still <laughs> just as tall, but I'm sitting down. <laughs> you might, you actually might be I taller. Think you're taller. Yeah. yeah, you could probably be sitting on the floor and be close <laughs> to the scene. The mic's never been up that He's high. not here. He can't defend himself. And I don't think these two have ever been at the table together at the same time. A back after a one episode absence is our resident realtor slash a grumpy old guy, Andrew Russell. How's it going? Well, oh, it's kind of shitty, but yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I'm good. No, I played you into that. It's, yeah, no, yeah. it's good to be back. I, uh, I missed you guys a little bit, sort of. So. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, you got a big role tonight, so I, uh, you know, don't let us down. Uh, speaking of old, I'm not going to go there, but uh, fresh off her yearly birthday. Uh, <laughs> her annual? The annual birthday, yeah. yeah. Every damn year you have one. I know. Uh, co-worker Aaron rounding out uh, the smaller crew tonight. Uh, but Oh, yeah. Happy birthday. Thank you. I'm 40. Minutes you're, you're late 40? for Ringo. Yes. Oh, wow. I wouldn't have guessed that. Thank you. You're Wait. welcome. No, legit. I would have thought you were younger than me. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. No, that's, I wasn't <laughs> going to tell anyone your age because I figured that would be the reaction. But hey, you know what? Own it. Yeah. I Do you know you're like fine. a full eight and a half years older than I am? I don't like <laughs> it when we talk like that. <laughs> Saying a full eight and a half might be the dumbest thing <laughs> I'm that's going to be said tonight. That's but how you can do you be a full young. eight and a half? A half is a half, not full. No, I, the, I get it. And I didn't <laughs> like it. I, got, I think I graduated uh, university before you graduated high school. Yeah, like a long time. <laughs> well, unless you went to uh, university for a full eight and a half. Yeah. 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 I didn't go to university, at, at least not university. We assumed math based on your math skills. <laughs> All right. Well, happy birthday to me. Yeah. Yeah. Where Where are we? Okay. How does it feel to be midlife, Aaron? Well, I'm going to Palm Springs for my birthday, so I'm really settling into um, being over the hill. Yeah. Hey. Can you believe that that like our parents had over the hill parties when yes. they were forty? That, that was a thing. Did Griff yeah. put like forty flamingos on your front lawn? <laughs> he didn't. Front he day. didn't. He put up a lot oh. of balloons for me though, and I appreciate that. That's like it. like half midlife though. Forty is pretty good. I'm. There's no way I'm making it to eighty. What's your crisis going to be, Aaron? Um, my midlife. Life crisis. I'm just going to buy more horses. That Sounds that terrible. Life crisis. No. Now are they half? No, never. We're not. <laughs> 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 We're not getting into that. Uh, so obviously a, a different mix here tonight. Uh, one that's never been done before on the podcast, but that's what's nice about the new, a larger podcast crew. We get to try out some different dynamics, which is a nice way of saying we're just throwing shit at the wall and uh, seeing what sticks. Uh, speaking of a different dynamic, this is exciting for us because not only do we have Riley from Communal Creative Studios with us once again, being quiet as a church mouse, probably, hopefully, uh, but for the first time in probably two years, uh, if you're newer to listening to this podcast, you may not even know who this guy is, but we are joined by Ryan Cooley uh, in studio, who, due to being one of the busiest humans on the planet, uh, has somehow put attending our podcast recordings at the bottom of his priority list. Uh, he's spending too much time with Dustin, I guess. <laughs> 
he is actually probably the only person I know that's busier than you are. Yeah, but and yeah, like he's way busier too. I just say I'm busy and make it look like that. But uh, that being said, he's obviously uh, got some really cool stories to tell. So he's going to be our feature interview for this episode. Uh, yeah, because he's been living quite the life, playing shows with one bad son, working with the legendary Matthew Good, uh, and so many more. So yeah, definitely some great stories to share with us. We'll have him uh, hop on the podcast in just a few minutes. But before that happens, we need to finally get this show on the road and kick things off with the glad game <laughs> listen i have a process and it works it sometimes you have a problem i have a problem too i have several of them do you ever think your immune system is just shutting down because you're 40 now oh, oh. probably and i have a terrible diet and i'm chronically dehydrated <laughs> oh good good well that's the, the first step is admitting you have a problem i'm not ready to change <laughs> 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 She'll save that for 50. <laughs> yeah. You'll get healthy when you're 50, Aaron. Sure. Don't worry about it. You'll still have a cough when you're 50. Was that your alarm to do your push-ups? Take my birth control. Oh. At 40? <laughs> <laughs> you won't need that much longer. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Touche. you drier than your throat when you do this podcast. <laughs> That's not why in. you take birth control. Well, that's not how uteruses work? <laughs> 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 oh my god <laughs> no but if you dry up then you can't okay, do I wasn't the gonna, to... no i wasn't gonna do a mommy minute but i think we need to talk about <laughs> female biology now yeah. i've seen a virgina before it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> i know my stuff <laughs> Do we need Lund back here to like balance us out? <laughs> did, did Lund keep it together? <laughs> he must have. Yeah, we're all I'm too busy trying to make sure he stays on the rails. I think oh. I think Lund kept it PG by yeah. the sounds Jeez. of things. Uh, God, podcast right. just went rated R. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, good luck with <coughs> the Glad game. The Glad Game is brought to you by Rock On Records. Saks Thrift Ave has a new look, new location, and a new name. Visit Rock On Records at their new location for Central Alberta's largest selection of vinyl and band merchandise. Find them at 4228 53rd Street. And be sure to follow them on Facebook and Instagram for all the latest deals. I'm surprised you could do that after the conversation we just had, which I don't even know if that's staying in or not, but it was... I'm a professional, yeah. Ted. Yeah, it turns out Lund wasn't the problem. <laughs> I mean, he is a problem, but he wasn't the problem. But let's get into the glad game, a very local one. It's too bad Walsh isn't here tonight because he's been a big advocate for hospital expansion. But uh, just this weekend, it was uh, announced. It was, uh, you know, something that even, uh, you know, friend of the show, Mayor Ken Johnson, had tears in his eyes announcing it. But the uh, Red Deer Cardiac Catheter Catheterization Lab is opening a five years ahead of schedule. It's part of that $1.8 billion uh, hospital expansion. But uh, yeah, it says uh, the interim lab lab over its span is going to save 160 lives that wouldn't be saved if like without uh, this interim lab opening five years earlier. So again, I think, uh, you know, Kevin, of course, with your uh, roommate, soon to be wife being a nurse, uh, you know, Aaron, your husband works, uh, you know, as a firefighter paramedic. I think we know that the state that healthcare is in. So I think uh, especially for Red Deer, just to, to have a bit of good news like that is pretty amazing. Do I know what a cardiac catheterization is? No. And I assume that one doesn't go in your pee hole is Aaron the problem or are you the problem <laughs> no I'm that, that's a real question I mean I mean cardiac, cardiac is, is your heart. heart yes that's what I mean yeah. a Cat. catheter a catheter just go goes yeah so, in any like vein or that's got to be a long hose if it's got to go all the way <laughs> to your heart <laughs> well, I mean depends uh, whose heart, to heart. <laughs> I, in fairness I think hey, they the do so man's <laughs> heart is <laughs> never mind <laughs> In fairness, when they do that, it does start in the groin, I think. Oh, yeah, fair. Actually, a yeah. lot of times. Yeah, I, yeah, I think okay. when they start. I, for I didn't cat. ask it in a very grown up way, but I actually like truly don't know how that works. I'm also not sure we need to speculate on no. anything medical. No, we, we, so, we're not the four people you want yeah, commenting yeah, on us. We need Lund here for that, for the <laughs> medical <laughs> advice. But uh, 160 lives, though, for that, for something that was not supposed to, to happen for another five years. It's just been nothing but bad news and, and that with us, our healthcare system lately. So I don't know. I just thought that was uh, something that was uh, pretty cool and worth mentioning, especially a lot of people probably uh, maybe didn't hear that news. So at least 12 people more will hear that now. Love it. And if anyone wants to tell us how a caddy, how to say it, first of all, cardiac catheterized. <laughs> oh my God. How big is my tongue right now? <laughs> if anyone wants to tell us how cardiac catheterization works, uh, we'd love to hear it. Maybe. Depends what it is. 
All right, like I said off the top, uh, we're doing things a little differently this episode. And of course, uh, this would happen to be the one and only time that Lund isn't here. And we don't do a pre-recorded interview uh, for this one, but we're doing it in real time uh, because our interviewee is here anyways and not on any particular schedule, uh, probably. Uh, so that means there won't be any confusion as to what tense we're speaking in. Uh, but we have uh, Ryan Cooley here. This guy's basically been a ghost for the last couple of years, <laughs> uh, along with Ryan not only built communal creative studios but offered us uh, space and resources to take our podcast to the next level uh, which is still really not that high but it's a, a, a higher level than we could have uh, taken a lot of stress off of me uh, he's been out doing a million different things uh, just basically being a cool guy doing cool guy shit and again uh, Ryan uh, sound tech extraordinaire for Bose Bar and Stage plus a whole lot of other things we're going to talk about here in this interview but uh, thanks for doing this Ryan I hope you're enjoying uh, being back here with us which probably feels like the same old crap except with a couple people you don't even really know <laughs> it's good to be back yes it's good to have uh it's good to be back with you guys in the room it's kind of been boring in here there's not a ton of stuff going on in here so <laughs> well i mean i'm glad we can make things a little less boring but like i said uh, it's been over two years since you've uh, been able to be here for a recording basically since before we ended the podcast the first time uh so the athlete here a new a new face for you but i guess tell us a little bit about what you've been doing because you're uh yeah you've been, been doing some pretty exciting stuff yeah so i got the opportunity to go out on the road with uh, matt good uh, i work for him basically full time we've done two cross canada tours so far this year and uh just about to leave to wrap up the last four shows here in a, in a week back into bc and that's on top of two are you are you still playing with one bad son or just like playing in general yeah we didn't do a ton of shows this year everybody's off kind of doing their own stuff uh, shane is a comic book artist and he wrote and drew his uh, own comic book this year so he's busy getting that out into the world it's called prairie gods wow you're pretty standard like uh western vibe stuff yeah sask guy or, yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah so he's been off doing that but uh we're going uh, out on the road in december uh just a little western canada thing to promote the ep we just released yeah that's about it i've been recording some records in in this room when i'm at home and uh yeah trying to stay as busy as humanly possible yeah i know i came in you're in there just playing like some baby be making music oh, yeah. maybe once uh once you we let you go from this interview we just can uh, play some background music for us but uh tell us a little more about being on the road with matt good obviously a, a canadian music legend and uh you know for a guy you've been a, a sound tech for i don't know how long so really like probably something you've been aspiring to yeah it's it's really cool to be kind of on the other side of the fence now like I, I've been a house tech at Bose for a long time it's been really cool to be able to like I'm the guy that uh, greets everybody when they get to the venue and now I get to be on the road and, and be the guy that gets greeted you know what I mean so it's uh, it's been where do I even start it's been crazy we've done probably 50 or 60 shows this year wow. together um, all over the place just in Canada so far but uh, Matt's been great um, it's first time really him touring with a band again since the Matthew Good band days. So uh, he's been doing solo stuff now. He's back out on the road with the full band. And it's just wild to be able to mix some of those old songs that we all kind of know from the early 2000s and, and whatever else. But yeah, it's been wild. We've been in buses and everything else. It's been good. So how does one get into being a sound tech? What's, what's the inspiration behind how you uh, got into that? I dealt, so I played in a band for a long time. I dealt with like quite a few, like I played in a punk band that toured Canada quite a bit. We dealt with a lot of like pretty crusty old sound guys that weren't very in it. So I decided when I was younger, I was like, you know, I think that's, uh, I could have, there's an angle there, you know? I, <laughs> I kind of think I could be good at that. So that's kind of where it started. I was doing shows out at the Multiplex in Springbrook. That's kind of where it started. Uh -huh. And that was just like a big old playground. Riley was out there with me as well. Uh, we had like a prototype version of what we have here out there. And it was pretty terrible. It was a pretty old building and we got ideas out. Um, but that was the first place I started doing sound. And I had a big old theater to myself to kind of learn and do stuff. And then shortly after that, I got my job at Bose. I've been there for, I guess, next July will be 10 years. I mixed my first show there 10 years ago in July. Wow. So it's, I have no idea where the years have gone, but uh, <laughs> it's been an absolute ride the whole time. But I learned a lot from just like the guys that come in from the bigger bands, you know, steal a little piece of information from everybody and kind of just learn it as you go type of thing and stay as involved as 
you can. Do you actually know what all those switches on the boards do? Like there's like 6,000 switches. I How do. do you know? Yeah. They're a little less complicated looking nowadays, but console I have when I'm out with Matt is basically just like a computer. Like it's, it's, it runs windows in the background and it's, uh, <laughs> it's a little less, uh, Slidey, yeah. yeah, there. That's the word I'm looking yeah. for. Yeah, yeah. Are you playing like solitaire too on on there? With, no, with like unf- uh, unfortunately yeah. not. No, no. But uh, yes, I do. Yeah. At this point now in my in my career, I do know what all the buttons do. Can't say that uh, for when I started. But. Yeah, it's insane though. Even like I saw you yesterday. Uh, you were back at Bo's doing sound for a, a show there, like a, the the bridal show. So probably a big, big, exciting one for you. But even look at like you hit one button and the sliders like they're like pre-programmed. <laughs> that oh, yeah. stuff is very intimidating to, to yeah, see you do all that. It's like anything. It's it's not as complicated as it looks. To be honest, it's cool gear. I get to play on cool gear all it's, the time. It's a little so. complicated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it weird now being back at Bo's too? Because you were on the the road so. Much much and i know we've had it's that, on, yeah like ethan come in too and do a, you know i used to work with you on all the the events that i emceed and now it's ethan but, yeah uh, ethan's been crushing it honestly uh, it'd be pretty different if you just coming back and just doing like a i don't want to say a regular old bows show but uh, especially when I, it's like a bridal show or something a little different uh, yeah i still love all the events that bows does like that place is still just always thinking outside the box so i love you know decorating the room up and doing cool <laughs> events like that so it's uh it keeps me grounded you know i get to go out and be spoiled on the road uh in all in all ways of the word and come home and and have to put in a real day's work again yeah <laughs> <laughs> so when you go on the road do you have all the equipment with you like do you bring that in or does each venue kind of have their own stuff that it they provide? It kind of depends. Like we're we're a bigger entity with Matt. So we uh, rent a full package before we leave. So we got a couple consoles, one for uh, monitors for on stage, one for front of house, backline, and a handful of other stuff like in-ear monitors and stuff. But other than that, we rely on the venues that we go to. Most of the venues we were on this tour are theaters. So something similar to the Memorial Center in Red Deer. Mm-hmm. A lot of just like, you know, community theaters like that. I would like to gossip. Because I imagine on the road, you have a lot of like, or see a lot of weird fan encounters. Tell me about some of them. (laughs) Yeah, I I definitely can. (laughs) Great, well thought out question. Tell me gossip. Yes. Do sound guys get groupies too? Uh, I've pulled a a few phone numbers (laughs) so far, you know. I do pass, I got a girlfriend and uh, so I do pass them on to the band who are all in their 50s and just perks them right up. Good answer. Good answer. (laughs) Gets them real excited though, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, the uh, what can I say? Touring in a bus is not as glamorous as it's made out to be. I can imagine. It is, uh, we're full crew too. There's 12 of us in there. And uh, yeah, the drives are crazy. Usually you're driving through the night. It's just like kind of an RV. Like it's bumpy, yeah. it's noisy, and it's... A uh, bunch of boys. Yeah. And it's Canada probably, right? Like it's a long ways between Oh cities. God, yeah. The drives like the US, are... It's just short, you know, city to city as you yeah, go across. Yeah. The drives are wild, yeah. Matt has a pretty... Uh, uh, just back to your question, but like Matt has a pretty interesting fan base in the fact that like these people have, you know, been listening to him for 20, 30 years. People, you know, line up in their cars at venues before like six hours before the doors open. And as soon as he gets off the bus, they'll chase him down to get stuff signed. He kind of doesn't like it, but that's, that's the responsibility <laughs> of being an artist like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but. Kevin knows what it's like to have to sign autographs. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah. 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 All the time. Just when he's paying for stuff with a check, but still it counts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, nothing too crazy on this tour, honestly. It's been pretty tame. Matt uh, not drinking a couple others on the bus are not drinking too so we're kind of just like trying to make the show the best it can be at this point so probably makes things easier on you like the crew yeah oh for and sure 100 percent every night the yeah. first the first tour we did earlier in the year was one of the most rock and roll things i've ever been a part of in my life <laughs> and uh a lot of things happened that, uh, <laughs> that i can't uh, really That's get fair. too far That's into fair. but uh, this next or this last tour that we've been doing is uh it's been great and you don't, and there's a less than 0% chance that Matt Good listens to this podcast. So you can be honest, but, the, and I, I say this, <laughs> listen to the same songs day after day, week after week. Like now do you like kind of get sick of hearing like the, the mm-hmm. same songs every night? Does it feel repetitive or do you just kind of tune it out? Cause you actually like have a job. I have, yeah, you? I've got a really cool job in the fact that like every time I'm, I do a show, I'm constantly trying to make the song sound a little bit better than the day before. So it's, it's like a never ending kind of thing that I'm stacking, which is cool. So, no, I'm not getting sick of the songs. Matt's really good about just like dude's catalog is gigantic. So it's like the set list is always changing. The usual 
like uh, old band hits are, are always in the set, but uh, it's been really cool. He's told me some stories about like where and how and why he wrote some of the songs, which is like super that crazy is, yeah, to get, yeah. in, get into his head a little bit about that stuff. But a little bit of a plug from an old 80s band from, sorry, a band from the 80s that he's uh, shown me that I've absolutely latched onto is a band called Talk Talk. I don't know if you've oh, ever yeah, heard they, of it. They did the original It's My Life. Yes, before exactly. Before Glenn Stefani did yeah. it. Yeah, or um, no did it. Yeah. Uh, that band's absolutely wild. And yeah. I encourage everybody to go listen to them. It's just like very crazy old music. And yeah, no, I guess it's probably a lot better than listening to fucking Doug and the Slugs every morning. Like, <laughs> may he rest in peace. But, and Peter doesn't let my boss doesn't listen to this podcast either. So it's fine. Whatever. I do play solitaire while the songs are. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever gets you out of bed yeah. in the morning. Yeah. I have to imagine too, like the crowds make things exciting as well. Like, oh, for sure. Yeah. There's that. Even if you're going into work being like, oh, okay, I got to do another concert. That has to be fairly infectious. Yeah. the I think the novelty of just touring uh, at a bigger scale is a little bit still new to me. Yeah. So like every single morning I wake up on the bus, I'm just like, oh, fuck yeah. I get to do this. <laughs> I get to do this again today. Yeah. And, and then I get to go back into my bunk and watch Breaking Bad. And then I get to get up in the morning and do it again. So it's like, yeah, I'm loving it. I'm having yeah. the best time. Yeah. Is there a, a venue that stood out to you that has had like the best fans or the craziest fans? Uh, maybe not from a fan perspective. Perspective, but just like the nerdy tech side in me, uh, we got to do history in Toronto, which is Drake's venue that he built. Absolutely crazy in there, all state of the art, like very futuristic. Like that's like what venues will evolve into maybe in 10, 20 years from now, you know? That place in the Beanfield Theater in Montreal was another one that's just oh. like stuck with me. Really crazy architecture, but they've just like put a big rock PA in there and they have crazy rock shows. It's really cool. Sweet. What about, and you don't have to mention the, the sp where it was or the name of the place, but what's the worst, like describe the worst venue that you had to do sound at. Uh, you might have to bleep this and we can continue talking about it because it's like one of my least favorite venues ever mm -hmm. is the guy who owns it is actually a beauty. Uh, <laughs> And he means very well, but it, uh, that place sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I've had to take like OBS has played there. Matt's played there. I've been there with the Trues. They're just like kind of the only club venue in uh to get all the tours, a lot of the stuff that Bose gets to. And it's just like, when I go in there, it makes me feel really great about Bose because it's just like, this is a comparable venue to what we do. <laughs> and it's not very good. Yeah, we get, well, people, you, they got Bose killer barbecue though. The props though too. Like great, like the Spice Girls wannabe, they gave a, a big shout out yeah. to, to Bose too. So maybe, maybe too, you're spoiled because you... Like, obviously, you're a big part of why Bose is always so good. Too, yeah, there's there's a lot of yeah. things going on correctly at Bose, yeah. though. For that place to... I can't even take very much of the credit for how the stage and, and everything else on that end works. Like, it's it's an anomaly, for sure. Like, I've seen a lot of venues now across the country, and we got, we got something really cool. Yeah. Right here. And I guess going back to the sound tech stuff, because especially for me, like, I, I find all that really interesting. But an area people don't really know a lot about, and I wish people would do this, like, for me. Well, not anymore because I don't do it. But like for wedding DJs, like almost the do's and don'ts and stuff. But people don't under understand too, right? Like exactly what it is you do and how important yeah. you are, right? And like like uh, even the crowd can make it hard on you, and obviously bands can make it really hard on you too, right? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, the the biggest thing for me every day is to just maintain consistent composure. So like, <laughs> yeah, that's tough. you know, if so, exactly, yeah. It's just if somebody if I walk into a situation where I already can see that things are gonna suck, it's just like don't show it on your face yeah. type of thing you know <laughs> it's kind of just deal with it yeah sorry what, what did you ask me in the first place i don't think i even actually <laughs> asked that question but uh i guess just yeah some of the things that like obviously like would make your job oh yeah, yeah, yeah. i do definitely get the uh i get walked up to and asked if i'm the dj all the time uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah and do you ever get like change the song i don't like this song. yeah i get that all 300 the time. people yeah, are yeah, dancing yeah. to it <laughs> yeah it's definitely now that i'm uh i've worked with quite a few djs and uh, learned a little bit about that end of things like I'm a month or two away from buying a DJ controller and just learning how to do it yeah. just for the, just for <laughs> the sake it. of it. <laughs> you get treated like a fucking iPod. I mean, yeah. I'm, sorry, I'm bringing something more to this. This is about you. Not me. Uh, <laughs> you have some PTSD from oh, yeah. being a wedding Lots. DJ. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. But, and uh, the other question I, I was thinking of, and it might be hard to pick. So you're obviously a musician and also a sound tech. What was cooler doing a show with Matt Good at Bose coming home as a sound tech or playing on stage? with one bad song. Oh, they've got, they both have like, 
Uh, they're two totally different things, but they're the same thing. Yeah. I still think the coolest and like most self-fulfilling thing I've done so far was doing the arena in Saskatoon with OBS. We got to headline the arena right when COVID ended in their hometown. So like not my hometown, obviously, but the band's hometown. So that's a big and it venue. Was, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah. 12,000 or so yeah, people. It was, yeah. it was a wild, wild thing. That was kind of like a check mark. Like I played an arena. Not only did we play an arena, but we headlined an arena. Yeah. So that's that one's still kind of... The most weight to it, I would say. Okay, yeah, it wasn't the secret answer. She, yeah, yeah, it was the Saskatoon, yeah, yeah. So Ryan, who's the who's the coolest person, or I guess the the coolest band, or like anybody you've met while being on the road, either as a musician or as a sound guy? Like, who have you encountered that you were just like, wow, they were they were really cool, or it was really cool to to meet that person or that band? Yeah, I wouldn't say necessarily favorite, but the people that have definitely just like left impressions on me. I was telling Riley this too. I did a festival in Fredericton this summer. It's called Harvest. Uh, very end of it. On the plane ride home, some of these names may be just to the common person they may not recognize, but do you know Victor Wooten, bass player? He sat next to me on the airplane and behind me was Feist and okay. four seats ahead of me was all of Broken Social Seat. So it was just like, and I got to meet all of them. Matt introduced me to a couple of them in the lobby of the airport and stuff. And that was just like, that was a cool moment of just like, oh, you're like, you work with these people. I felt the yeah. same when I got to meet Fred Penner for the first time. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's Future Islands got to meet and hang out with and work with all of them when they played at Bose. Um, Rain and Chantel, uh, like Rain uh, Maida from Our Lady Peace and Chantel Kraviacic, however you say her last name. I think that was right. That's close enough. Yeah. She also <laughs> does not listen to this pod. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. And if, if you do, Chantel, we're sorry. Close. Come on and correct us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there anybody you've met that they were just like a complete and total jackass? Uh, we'll say yes, but I won't tell you who. Yeah. All right. Fair <laughs> they enough. might listen. <laughs> tell to me later. Yeah. 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 When you've seen so many amazing shows at Bose and like different things, do you have any that stand out? Like even for I like I can say uh, maybe Kevin and Aaron will agree with me. Like Stephen Page. Oh my god. At Bose. Yeah, I wasn't like, even I wasn't even there for that, that show. Time. No, oh, yeah, Ethan. That Ethan. Yeah. yeah, that was like incredible, and that's the yeah. kind of like. But well, is there anything like that that stands out for? you there's a handful of shows definitely i probably have a top three or top five both black pistol fire shows absolutely melted my brain got to hang out with them we went to the vat and jammed after and stuff too so that was just like a cool we got to hang out and work with them whatever else uh bahamas that's top two for sure best shows i've seen at bose just like as a guitar player that was just an absolute guitar playing clinic Mm. That guy as an artist is just, I find him so intriguing and interesting and an incredible band live. Yeah. I think those two are the first two that come to my mind. I mean, but... Wannabe's got to be up there. <laughs> oh, yeah. You've worked yeah. with them a lot. Yeah. yeah. They're all amazing. I think they might be bringing a band this time. Yeah. Ooh. I just like have been watching some of their Instagram stories. Oh, cool. Hey, spoiler then, alert for a little bit later in the show. There yeah. Maybe may cut that. Maybe, spice <laughs> maybe cut that out. No, I mean, it's, it's already true. announced. So, yeah. Yeah, I just have yeah. been seeing some of their Instagram footage and they're playing with a band. The first time they were at Bose, they were with a mm-hmm. band and it was yeah. like, it was wild. It yeah. was really cool. And you've seen them probably more times even than the three of us have seen <laughs> them. But they just like every time it's so good. Oh, yeah, they are great. Yeah, that's great. Fun. Yeah. And are you are you going to be there for the Taylor Swift show or are you on the road in a couple weeks? What's the date on the 15th? That? I'm gone for oh. this. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Let's yeah, I'm going for that. that one yeah. better, I think. <laughs> I'm going out actually with a, uh, a country band. A couple of the members are from Red Deer. They're called the Prairie States. Uh, cool. They're great. We're going out and supporting the Washboard Union for a week and a half. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Just a cool guy doing cool guy <laughs> shit. Right? It's yeah. just, just work now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's just cool work. Yeah. So, Ryan, I have, I have another question about general Canadian musicians. So, mm-hmm. musicians a lot of time are the big bands, obviously. I think a lot of people just assume that they make crazy money and they're all super wealthy and that's like maybe more than mainstream guys that are getting played on the radio and whatever but so like a a canadian musician are these guys or are are the bigger ones are they earning a good living like i'm assuming they're not kind of earning anything even close to what some of these huge touring bands are but like can you earn a decent living as a touring musician in canada oh yeah you can I would say it's harder to like break out and build a fan base and do everything from scratch nowadays. But the bands that had radio support and success in the early 2000s and like when radio was still part of the ecosystem of shows and everything, they're not making millions, but they're living pretty good, you know? Yeah. So it is possible. Just the climate of the music industry is... 
depends who you ask, but it's just a mess out there, you know? Well, and is that, so is that record labels taking the majority of the income or like, how does that? Yeah. It's a little bit of like, we just don't sell records anymore. So like right. there's, this goes a little bit deeper too. I have an opinion of just like why songwriting is kind of getting watered down a little bit because there's no like big, big incentive to write really good records anymore. You know, if you wrote a really, really good record and you took it to a label and got it distributed, you could make a million bucks, even if you only made a dollar and sold a million records. Mm-hmm. So right. like that whole incentive of like, we're going to go out and sell units, even though the label will take a bunch, you'll still not, we still don't have anything to sell anymore other than t-shirts. So the, the so money now is in touring, I would assume, like you're getting paid. Yeah, for money's shows. In, in touring and in merch, which is t-shirts and whatever else. Right. But that big piece, physical copy of a CD or something, that was a, a huge part of just the financing of everything in the industry that doesn't exist anymore. Oh. So yes, tickets are going up in price and Ticketmaster is all scumbags and they're kind of doing it. <laughs> but like, that's kind of just like to have these machines operate at that level, you kind of have to have ex- more expensive tour, and so tour dates like, and tickets and stuff. Like Spotify, obviously, is a big issue there. Like you hear a lot of artists are complaining about Spotify and you know, you yeah, you just like, you don't like get, cents. you get paid so little that no one even really counts it as we don't really measure it as income anymore. Right. It's, literal pennies half yeah. pennies on so, the dollar so listen just to turn into butts and seats right That's exactly yeah theory, yeah you'd like to think that but why don't you just write like 30 of the same sad girl songs release a double album and make a billion dollars that seems to be working <laughs> a lot of artists did that back in the day yeah yeah sorry i'm i'm also i'm bringing something personal to, to that too because i don't think that's a very good album but anyways uh, yeah. <laughs> Later Love in the show, it. we'll talk about Ted's personal issues. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have time for that. It's supposed to be a Don't we do that every day. show? Yeah. <laughs> this is just Ted's therapy? Is that what this is? Yeah, it ain't working. <laughs> uh, going back to, to touring with Matt Good, I know you, you told me you do have a couple stories you can tell. Like, I know you you said you guys kind of fucked up a ferry ride for everyone. Oh, yeah. that was a That's a good one. That's a good messed up collective story that happened to us. Uh, so, we uh, last tour, we made it out to, where did we go? Victoria, Campbell River, made it out to the uh, island, which is like kind of tricky to do in a bus and a trailer just because of mm-hmm. getting a bus on the ferry, blah, 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 getting across costs, whatever. As we were leaving the ferry to come back into Vancouver, we actually broke down on the ramp of the ferry. Bus wouldn't start. We ran out of air in the air brake system. So then the brakes locked up. So we couldn't get towed off. And we put the whole ferry schedule for the day behind probably an hour and a half. Like we were all joking that we were going to end up on the news or something because we... Having taken that ferry this summer and waited for hours to get on one, I would have murdered all of you. Yeah. Maybe it was yeah, the same it was. <laughs> Aaron was there, he almost got murdered. We eventually did. A mechanic came and uh, changed the fuel filter or something and we eventually got it going. But uh, oh. that was like, uh, we thought we were going to miss the show. It was the last show of the tour or two at the Commodore. And, and like, you that's... almost got murdered. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah, there was some very, oh, yeah. very angry people yeah. with us. But, uh, I don't but... care if you're Matt Good. No, that ferry ride is... Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like they have the names. You never know who's in a bus anyways. It's not like your name's plastered on the side of it. So um, that's a good reason not to have it on there, I guess. Right. Big time. <laughs> yeah. Give me a second to cultivate was, was some good Cole ones. Plays bus that emptied out there. No, that was Dave, Dave, Matthews. Dave, Matthews. Yeah, Dave Matthews. Yes. And uh, from like having pulled over on the side of the highway in the middle of the night and emptied the, the tank. That's a real thing. And I understand how that could have happened. And that is so messed up that that happened. <laughs> Do you ever pull up to like a full service gas station and like have the bus driver say, hey, load me up? <laughs> no, but uh, you can use that, that joke. If you that want. joke definitely gets thrown around. All Does the it? Time. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of tour buses have a no pooping rule. That's big time true. Is, yep. it, is it like brown for a brown? 100 bucks? if you want to go number two on the bus. Uh, or do you have to poop in a bag? I've that's heard- what you, okay. yeah, yeah, that's what you have to do. Yeah. Is that okay? Thank you, Tana Mojo, for teaching me about tour bus etiquette. That's That's a real thing, oh, yeah. yeah. See, um, and everyone said, oh, that's going to stay on the rails with Lund not here tonight. You already got to talk about poop. We're not even halfway through. <laughs> Like I said, why do you have to poop in a bag? Like they have septic systems in them. But it's like, yeah, no. Just lingers? Yeah. I I don't actually know for sure 100% the reason behind it, but I would just guess that it's like you'd never get that tank clean enough to not smell. Is this, is it an old bus? Not, it doesn't not particularly. Have carpeted walls too, which yeah. is like that's just that just it's hanging. Like, the bus we had no. the last year had carpeted walls, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Matt was smoking in the back the whole time. It was wild. <laughs> Needless to say, we did not get that bus the second time. <laughs> As a guy who owned an RV and with a bunch of kids who like to poop, I just that boggles my mind. We yeah. never ever had an issue. No smell, nothing.
nothing. That's yeah, I don't know. I point. wonder if it's just a different type of septic system in one of those or something and it's or if not it's just like you just don't do it yeah, yeah it's just, i also wouldn't want like don't really want to if i don't have to like that's my time it's so stressful on a bus and you're like hanging on and but more stressful in the everywhere. middle of the night to have to go up to the bus driver and be like sir you need to find the nearest gas station oh that's and happening then, or the closest yeah. bag yeah, yeah or that and then you have to say sir i need you to pull over i have a bag of poop wouldn't the bag smell worse <laughs> but you get, you get, you get rid bus. of it if you get rid of it you ruin this whole interview are we, are but... we doing this are we really doing this right now? Okay, so, let's take this conversation so Ryan, let's forget about the music over. industry if you had a girl who was half horse half human. <laughs> where does she poop from <laughs> It's a hell of a question, man. <laughs> Would it be human poops or horse poops? <laughs> that requires a lot of thought. And, <laughs> and Aaron's gone. <laughs> oh, amazing. Honestly, a great question. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, well, we'll start. To, oh, boy, wrap things up here. But uh, it is, it's it's really exciting to have you back here. Like I said, it has been a long time since both you and Riley have been here. And I know you, you don't want you to say a lot, so you can really just make this a yes or no question. But as far as communal creative studios goes, uh, maybe like some new exciting things coming up in the future. We've got some very exciting news. Not ready to share it all, but uh, yeah. Things are growing, moving upwards. You're so. bringing in a real podcast that uh, people listen to. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not get crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Ryan, we'll let you get back to uh, making your, playing your baby making music. And, oh, uh, thanks. Full, usually, like, we give Riley a lot of shit for making noise. <laughs> When we're trying to record, but if you, if like, we, we don't mind a little bit of background noise. I actually have, I'm going to Chicago in a week and a half with this metal band from Red Deer that I uh, should be practicing those songs to go record. So I was going to say, maybe I'll sound like metal. Maybe music, I'll bombard yeah. you with some <laughs> wild tunes from, from the other side of the wall. Well, uh, thanks for talking to us about pooping in a bag. We really appreciate it. <laughs> that is this is that is the most your whole career yeah. built up to this moment. Yeah, yeah. that's the most important piece of tour bus information you can get, basically. <laughs> so that's how you be rock and roll. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Ryan, again, thanks so much for coming on here. I know this is uh, not necessarily your jam, but uh, like I said, it's it's fun to have you back here, and uh, congratulations too on all the success and uh, cool thanks, guy buddy. shit that you've yeah. been doing. I can't wait. Appreciate uh, it to see. I love following along and seeing all the cool guy shit you've been doing <laughs> appreciate it man thanks for having me now we talk about pooping like a horse yeah. or a woman yeah <laughs> oh yeah first of all thank you again to ryan for uh, hopping on here and, and joining us like i said he's not not the biggest behind the mic guy but uh, it was really cool to hear his stories it's always great seeing him because we really don't as much anymore and uh really only got off the rails at the end we, you know we can't escape that stupid horse centaur horse girl thing but now it is like it's a good question that i want to talk about <laughs> if you have a half horse half human let's say human top horse bottom you've got a human stomach but a horse bottom is that horse poop or human poop i have to as the resident horse expert <laughs> unless somebody else wants to try and claim that title i have to assume that it would be Human poop in a horse shape. Like the shape of a horse or the shape <laughs> of a horse? That'd, no, be, a, that'd would be, be very it would, impressive. It would have to go through the human digestive system, but then there's got to be a digestive system still in the horse and it would come out in the horse poop balls. But if you're eating like a person, I, honestly, like I would actually like to see a diagram of how the digestive system of a centaur works. Yeah, we, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if that exists, but we can we can try and outsource one. OK, Andrew's on. And now the other important <laughs> question, if you put a cardiac catheter in a horse. Oh, my goodness. Where, oh, is yeah. That, the hose isn't long enough. <laughs> Which groin do you start at where a human oh. groin would be or where the horse's groin is, which is all the way at the back? Oh, my God. This has become such a scientific medical podcast. I actually, I like, have many questions that I didn't have previously. Okay, I'm not even joking. Like, I just Googled that and there's a full oh, drawn wow. diagram of a centaur's <laughs> digestive system on Reddit. I think what I love is <laughs> God, that we the are not wild. the first the ones to... Wild. Think so deeply about this. Oh, see, that's very troublesome for me that other people are thinking this. So there's two hearts. There's an upper heart, which would be the human heart. There's a lower heart, which would be the horse heart. There appears... Okay, so the horse does not have a stomach. It's the human stomach, which then leads into the small intestine of the horse. Huh. 
Uh, this is a female horse because it has ovaries and a uterus, apparently. <laughs> good. Okay. That's, a, that's good information to know. Yeah. So, I believe the digestion happens in the small intestine or in the intestines. So, one would have to think it would be a horse poop. A horse poop. That yeah. was so matter of fact that you just <laughs> delivered that. Hey, someone's got to bring some oh, intelligence yeah. to this podcast. Yeah, I mean, this whole podcast is just a pile of horse shit. So, I guess <laughs> it, it all makes sense. But, uh, all right. Until <laughs> next episode, we'll, we'll revisit the horse human paradox uh, next episode <laughs> again but uh let's head into on oh, who who wants to step up and be the sound effect guy without lund here for shooting the breeze okay <laughs> you know what at least you lund moved into like shooting first and then the breeze happening but it's like you don't shoot first and breeze later Right? There no, has to be a breeze you for shoot. you to shoot. Yeah. Okay. No, that was pretty How do you good. shoot nothing? Yeah. It was pretty light breeze. <laughs> pretty light breeze, right. small gun. Yeah, but, it, wasn't, it yeah. Wasn't, wasn't the breeze we had today, I'll tell you that much. Shooting the Breeze is brought to you by The Gutter, Red Deer's all-new bowling alley and the home of Rare Pizza. Now available for delivery on Skip the Dishes. Whether it's a day with the family or a night out with friends. <laughs> Sit <laughs> still, Kevin. No, I was scratching my back. <laughs> Sorry. Aaron can't do it. I'm <laughs> Sorry. Whether it's a day with <laughs> <laughs> this is why horses wear blinders. <laughs> they don't work the same on human eyes. I don't know. Okay. All right. Whether it's a day with the family or a night out with friends, make the gutter your go-to spot for bowling, pizza, and fun. Visit thegutter.ca to book your lane today. But speaking of the gutter, they did just have their uh, one-year anniversary. So uh, congratulations to them. I've been, it was a great year. I think they, uh, you know, and we could talk a little more freely about this without Dustin and Lund here. But uh, no, they've just done such a great job of establishing themselves quickly and celebrated the one-year anniversary by having like a fundraising tournament for the Central Alberta Child Advocacy Center. So I will see what year two brings. As long as they keep making good pizza. Incredible pizza. But uh, let's get into shooting the breeze. And we have alluded to this already in the, uh, the interview with Ryan, but I think it is the biggest piece of news uh, that we have. This has already been announced, but once again, oh dear, very excited to present Wannabe, a Spice Girls tribute at Bose Bar and Stage on Thursday, May 8th. So usually they're about two years between shows. Uh, we must have done such a good job putting it on and, and uh, dancing for them that they wanted to come back right away. But it's the uh, Spice Up the West tour. So they're doing a, another tour out here, obviously in the West. But uh, not only exciting that they're coming back, but we get to present it again, which is a uh, pretty darn cool. Maybe, Andrew, we can finally get you at the Spice Girls show. Yeah. We Maybe. were really close to getting you there. I know it's a Thursday night, so it's kind of tough. Yeah, the uh, the dad duties and sports dad duties and that, it, it's tough. It does sound like a big pile of duty, but I know Aaron. I made it last yeah. year and you, I had to leave early. You but have was... one kid who's a baby that doesn't do anything. All she does is things. She's the busiest <laughs> baby you've ever nah, you seen. You have no <laughs> idea, Erin. You have no idea. <laughs> she climbs everything. Yeah, you have, you have no idea. Times it by three. Well, I would never. <laughs> no, because you're 40. not. No, because you're 40. Dry it up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Possibly. We'll never know. But very excited again. And I know uh, so if, if, even if you've been before, as a bunch of people who've been three times, it is fun every time. Mm -hmm. And we're going to hopefully bring a JD, the DJ back yes. too, because he uh, did a great job getting the crowd going. But uh, tickets yeah. on sale now. Uh, and also uh, stay tuned to our social media because we're going to be giving a bunch away again uh, between now and May. I'm just stretching. Just stretching. You are very distracting <laughs> over there. I'm a busy baby. <laughs> All do you, Kevin do you climb does things? Is things. <laughs> All she does is. But are things. you a good climber or no? Better than her baby. <laughs> uh, she's an excellent climber, actually. I, yes. think, I think you're going to have to have a climb off. Yeah. Sure. With Kenzie, yeah. Well, tomorrow. Put us both in a tree. Let's see who gets to the top. to the treehouse tomorrow at three. You guys can climb together. I'm busy. <laughs> Busy doing things. Yeah. Uh, also, again, this, you know, uh, if you hear this in time, uh, this is coming up really quick. But November 15th, we also mentioned this with Ryan, but uh, the Taylor Swift tribute show uh, going on at Bose. That's a Friday night and it's an actual like, Taylor Swift impersonator from the, the UK. I mean, we went to the Taylor Swift dance party a while ago, which was just a guy like press and play on Taylor Swift songs and had a great time. So I, I can only imagine the kind of time I'm going to have at this. I know we just finished a giveaway uh, as well. 
Uh, maybe we'll give away a couple more closer to. But to November 15th, get your tickets to that one. And while you're on the website, just get your tickets to a wannabe as well. Mm-hmm. All right. What else do we want to shoot the breeze about? Though I had a, a proud, I don't know, ad- adopted dad slash brother type of moment. Uh, but uh, it's been very busy the last couple months with events. And uh, uh, this is September, October. I always MC a ton of events. And uh, the athlete got to MC his first ever event uh, just a couple of days ago. It was the, the Green Gala at the Energy Innovation Fair. Uh, we're really grateful that they reached out to to us to uh, have a couple of us come and MC it. And, uh, you know, I know for, for me, I, I love doing it. And uh, I know you were a little nervous, but I got to say you crushed it. And it's nice to have uh, someone else now, too, that we can go and, and do these events with. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I appreciate you asking because it's something not that I would say I wanted to like do with my life, but I feel like it's something I should do. And you like, want to afford a and wedding. And get better yeah. at. Yeah. And I have to pay for a wedding. So... <laughs> yeah. That part of it is good too, but no, it was good. The people that put on the event were great. Very helpful. Ted put the script together, gave me a whole car ride to (laughs) RDP for me to go through the script, which is, would not recommend for your first Mm -hmm. time Mm -hmm. talking in a microphone in front of people, but pressure makes diamonds. We survived. (laughs) Um, No, it was great. And I feel like talking in front of people is just something, even though it's terrible and awful and it's it's just something you should just do a little more of because it puts you out of your comfort zone. So that was kind of part of why I wanted to do it. And I don't want to talk myself out of a bunch of MC gigs, but people are like very, they they seem to think like it's the hardest thing ever to do. And I think that's what makes it so easy in general for public speaking is like people are very easy on you when when you're up there uh, with the microphone phone in front of your face they're not being that judgmental if you stumble over your words like is can you be a terrible mc yes but also if you just go up uh, be a little prepared and confident and kevin was all of those things as prepared as he could be i accidentally gave him all like the really wordy lines too i just kind of (laughs) separated things to make sure we were both kind of talking and on the mic and he (laughs) i gave him a lot of like i accidentally gave him all the boring crap yeah and and then the one joke i wrote for him i ended up saying (laughs) because we decided that we only had one microphone and it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have worked but like it was funny because it was an energy innovation <laughs> event which that's our jam ted yeah. and i know <laughs> like as much about that as cardiac ca- ca- catheterization yeah, that, yeah. that thing so they went very easy on us because we clearly had no idea what we were talking about and then we had to like interview the winners and so it was kind of just like here's the ball you roll with it yeah. and then they said things that were like way smarter than yeah, we, we had ever no idea said. what they were talking that was a literal smile and nod yeah. And then the best part, though, and again, this is why it was such a, it felt like such a proud papa for Kevin is we had like four chairs there. And usually it was the, the first couple winners was just one person. But then it was three people. So it just worked out that Kevin sat down to interview them by himself. Well, I just stood there. And in the middle, the speaker that, that we were using there blew. Oh. So then Kevin also had to deal with that and roll with that. So like you got it all at once, basically. Like you, now yeah. you're you could do you can you may as well just host this podcast. I'll just stay home. <laughs> Yeah, we'll just make this a solo podcast <laughs> and we'll just interview Ryan Lund every episode. Perfect. Oh, okay. if he shows up. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah good luck editing that. But <laughs> uh, we do want to uh, thank you, uh, everyone uh, from Rethink Red Deer and the Energy Innovation Fair for having us. I just did uh, Bose Brides and Brunch for the third year. Uh, what's today? Monday? That was yesterday, uh, which is a great event as well that Bose puts on. And just a reminder that it, you can do pretty much any type of event you want to add Bose, and that's a uh, pretty good good one. I know uh, Kevin's fiance was there at that, won a prize and, uh, you know, and it's good for her because she got to check out the, the wedding venue. Are we are we revealing that yet or do I have to delete that, that you guys are having your reception at Bose? I mean, we haven't sent out any like formal invites or save the dates or anything, but like we're not going to move it. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> which it's I happening. Think, which I think is pretty sweet. She was yeah. pumped about her prize, by the way. Yeah. She like called me immediately after and was like, I want a prize. Yeah. And I wasn't the one who drew it too. So, it was perfect. The, the person, the vendor drew it. But uh, and then we have uh, by the time this comes out this will have happened but lund and i uh, were invited back to do the interviews again for the business of the year awards by the red deer district chamber uh which is uh, again i was a lot of fun last year very excited to do that again and i'm also excited for november where there's a lot less things happening uh speaking of the chamber too uh we uh don't have a new lund employed or business spotlight coming out at the moment took a little bit of a pause because of the aforementioned a busy couple of months but uh go back on youtube and 
watch all of them again. Uh, probably just as good the second time, honestly, as the first time. Uh, but we're working on a few more. And again, if you have an idea, uh, you want Lund to come to your business or you just have an idea of something we can do for that, uh, make sure you let us know. And uh, yeah, five episodes in, I still doesn't have a job. Uh, and as always, want to give a quick shout out to uh, Red Heart because we're still, uh, these things are lasting us a long time, even though we drink a lot of them. But uh, enjoying some more O beer uh, here in the studio, a Red Heart uh, too. Uh, the O beer is now available in the tap room at Red Heart still uh, at Bose, Cilantro and Chive uh, and maybe a couple other places we don't even know of. But uh, still pretty cool to have uh, these cans and, uh, and be able to have our own beer. And very excited now that this has been rescheduled because uh, when we first started working with Red Heart. Daniel Wesley was going to play a show there, a very like solo intimate show. Uh, now that's been rescheduled for November 22nd. And again, if you if you really like live music and just like nice, good chill music, uh, definitely go to that one. So you can just go uh, find Red Heart on social media and get tickets for that one. And you will probably see me there. And uh, before we move on to Deer Call, uh, we haven't done this again, uh, maybe once in the last couple episodes, but uh, Andrew Russell, of course, with you here. Uh, it's always nice to get a, a little bit of a, an update on the the real estate market so is this is this a just the tips or just a market minute uh i mean i didn't really come prepared but it could be both <laughs> yeah but you're so good you don't need i always to be love prepared. giving you the tip yeah. ted yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh boy what a what an on the rails podcast episode <laughs> but uh or maybe again we're just uh, now moving into the winter months right so do you do you see more like more or less uh, sales in the winter because like me not knowing anything would just assume people are less inclined to sell their homes so you would be correct in that sales do slow down but we we are not in buyer's market right now and granted it depends on how you segment the market because over 600 which is kind of what i deem to be kind of the luxury segment in red deer like in calgary that's not at all the <laughs> case but in red deer over 600 will buy you a very nice home. So over six is quite slow at the moment. And I do think that's going to change. But the under six and kind of specifically under five market is really hot still. Sales have slowed down, which is normal. Like when we when we get out of August into September, uh, October, November, December, like obviously it gets cold. The weather's miserable. People don't typically move on purpose in the wintertime. If they are moving, it's generally because they need to move. And so, yeah, it's normal that sales slow down. It's a better time to buy in that you're going to have less competition. Prices are holding steady though. The market market is in demand. Alberta as in general is in demand. And so the other interesting thing that's happening right now is uh, there's about to be a big interest rate drop. Inflation was announced at 1.6%. So they're below that 2% target that they were shooting for. The speculation right now is that we're going to get a half percent drop. So Bank of Canada is going to come out uh, good chance or very good chance that we're going to see a half percent drop in the rates. That's significant. Um, they've dropped it by a quarter percent every time, but a half percent is a big drop. So, And then further speculation of that is that we're actually going to see another quarter percent and who knows, it could even be another half percent by December, which is going to stimulate the market. It's going to allow a bunch of people who don't qualify at the current payments right now to jump into the market and rent prices are insane. So Ted, you wouldn't know this because you've been living in the same place for so long, your rent's <laughs> yeah. probably never gone up. But, no, I do. Um, I will say the rent I've got a great deal where I'm living yeah so like most people's rent is a lot more than what a mortgage payment yeah. is right now it's, and oh, yeah. it's crazy like we're seeing I'm seeing some people are paying 1400 bucks for a basement suite that used to be nine hundred dollars a mm -hmm. month mm -hmm. right like it, this stuff is is escalated significantly and it's you know so all the renters out there that are screaming that the landlords are greedy like keep in mind when your landlord had to renew their rate at six percent versus two percent like their payment and cost of carrying that went up significantly so there is a reason why the rents are going up. It's not just landlord greed. Their costs have significantly gone up. And we're at the point now where basically most of the people that renewed during COVID and got those crazy low rates are all coming up for renewal. So we're seeing a lot of this. So the rate drop is good because it's going to prevent um, a lot of people who might have gone into foreclosure who might have not been able to handle that increase in the payment because it's significant. Like jumping from 2% to 6% is huge. Yeah. You know, that can make a couple grand a month in your mm. payment really easily. So and for nothing. It's, it's for literally nothing. all in interest. It's yeah. all, well, it's not nothing to the bank. The bank loves it. Yeah. Right. They're very interested. Yeah. Yes, yeah. they are. Yeah. Yep. So they're, they're posting record profits as always, as they always do. But anyway, so these rate drops are actually going to be good. And so the interesting thing with the rate drops is it is going to cause the price of housing to go up even more. As more buyers jump into the market, obviously our supply right now is super low. We've got all these people that have moved into the province. Home builders are having a great year because suddenly there's a massive amount of demand. Again, finally, even though building is expensive right now, they're busy because people can't find what they want. So they're opting to build, which is good. We need that supply in the market. It's going to help eventually 
alleviate prices, but we're probably two or three years out before we can build enough properties to catch up to the amount of population that we've gained. So it's kind of an interesting situation in that it's it's going to be good for the market. It's going to be good for a lot of buyers that they can jump into the market now once the rates go down, but it is going to push prices up. So prices are stable right now. They, they haven't really gone up since mm, probably May, June this year is kind of when we saw our peak in the market. I do think that by next spring, we're going to start to see prices pushing again. So if you've been thinking about buying or you're thinking about upgrading, now is a good and obviously, yeah, cliche for a realtor to say that, but <laughs> it actually legitimately is a really good time to upgrade now because I do believe by March, April, uh, we are going to see prices go up. And I think we're going to see them go up for a good part of the spring, just simply due to the amount of the extra amount of people that are jumping into the market because finally the rates are affordable. So long and short of it is the market is great. Prices are going to go up. The over 600 market is not going up currently, but it will in the spring. Um, as we see people, as rates come down, people will be able to afford to upgrade again. That market's going to start to push up again too. So I think we're going to see good market in Alberta for at least the next two or three years. And then find us a house. Please. <laughs> are you back? Are you back at work now? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. Find us a house before I Have buy your people a new horse. Call my people. Okay. Yeah. Can you teach Lund how to go back to work? <laughs> no, I know. Oh, speaking I can't of do Lund, that. all I took, do not tell my landlord that he could probably get away with raising rent. Price. Don't tell Kevin's landlord <laughs> either. Yeah. No. All right. Well, thanks, Andrew. That was a good update again. And hey, if you're if you're looking to buy a house or you're wondering what the real estate market is doing, uh, now you know. This Andrew Russell Market Minute was brought to you by Andrew Russell and Associates at Remax Real Estate, the trusted experts for all things real estate in central Alberta. Skip the sales pitch and get real advice from real people who offer real results. Visit their website at andrewrussell.ca. So I'm moving on now because uh, the athlete did an admirable job filling in as our sound effects guy. But uh, for the first time ever, and uh, we'll see how uh, Andrew does with this, but he came prepared as we head in to deer call. (laughs) No, I don't know if I like that. There, that's better. That sounds like me on Wednesday so after is, Taco Tuesday. No, so this is a grunt. A there's numerous, <laughs> there's numerous forms of deer calls, as I've learned. So I just started hunting last year. I've learned a lot. There's numerous forms. So this is a deer grunt. So this is like a so that's buck. like when they're porking. This this is a buck calling. It's just basically a buck calling. Oh, like a, okay. Um, because then there's also like the the sound a doe makes when it's calling for a fawn is different, and then a fawn bleat is a much higher pitch. That's what Lund is more at least trying to do. I I'm not sure like. what Lund is <laughs> trying to do. There's never been any consistency to it. But um, this call actually, you can adjust it and do a fawn oh. bleat. But so if you're if you're hunting for a doe, if you have a tag for a doe, it's a much different call versus if you're during the rut season and you're calling for a buck. Anyway, oh so so let's okay, let's try again. Yeah, I don't know if that's accurate or not. Some, somebody who hunts that listens to this more is going to be like, "That was shit," but it's I guarantee more accurate than Lund. Yeah, it's a hundred percent more accurate yeah. than Lund. Yeah. Deer Call is brought to you by Cilantro and Chive, home of the Caesars that eat like a meal. Stop in at either location in Red Deer or Lacombe for the burger of the month and support a great cause. With $2 from every burger sold going back to the local guest chef's charity of choice. Cilantro and Chive, your favorite new destination to meet with family and friends for food, drink, conversation and fun. It's just that simple. All right. Well, I think maybe by now, you know, the drill with a deer call, we'll put a post out about once a month on social media, just asking a pretty generic question. Uh, We want you to comment on it. And then if you comment, you'll be in the draw for a chance to win one of two $25 gift cards to cilantro and chive. And because now we're getting into, you know, in September, October, especially is uh, when a lot of new TV shows come out or new seasons of TV shows. And uh, just ask a really simple question. uh, Who is the best TV character of all? time and there's a reason why i thought of this that i'll see at the end when i share my answer but uh yeah this is again one that i knew we could at least get a a wide variety of answers and uh hopefully things that we can discuss and uh, agree or disagree because i do think there's some dumb answers in here but uh that's just me i still want want everyone to comment and uh give your answer anyways but uh best tv character of all time one of our our winners robin said daryl dixon from the walking dead and however many spinoffs there are with which like for a very very short period of time during that show's run i would agree with but like a lot of that show just got really tired that's the problem like every time i thought of characters i was like they were great for three seasons and then the show got awful or so i yeah i agree he was great Mm -hmm. and then after the prison season my god 
But Norman Reedus also is phenomenal. And he was in like some like Boondock Saints. Oh yeah. my God. What a yeah. name too. Yeah. <laughs> Norman Reedus. Norman Reedus. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is a one. Well, it's not you, but uh, our other winner, Kevin, said Archer. Uh, full disclosure, I've never watched that show. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. What? Archer. Watch Archer. Aaron named her cat after I did. Archer. Yeah. Yes. And that's, it's, it's, that's like a cartoon one though, right? Yes. And it's yes. like Aisha Tyler and... Yes. I forget the guy's name, but the guy with the beard. Yeah, the Bob's Burger guy. Yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Archer is like, I, it's one of my most quoted shows. Okay, well, I'll put that on yeah. the list. Kevin, did you watch any of those summer movies yet? No, but I have <laughs> seen Archer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have you seen that one? Archer? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've watched a few episodes. No. Never oh, got, so never got super you, hate, you hate everything, but should I watch it? Um, the episodes I watched were funny. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Miranda said, this is an old one, but Joey from Friends, who I also think at the time, but then you watch it back and like, hey, he was funny, but it's like, yes, he was a woman. I like, I don't know. They tried to make him too many things. Yeah. It's same thing. The show got convoluted and tired and it doesn't hold up. No, uh, stop. Don't say a bad thing about Friends. No, it's... It's a great comfort show, but is Joey one of the greatest characters on TV no, ever? Absolutely no, absolutely Exactly. No. Um, and then Erica said Phoebe, who I actually like better because I I still do a lot of Phoebe quotes and I just like how they made like being weird normal with Phoebe. True. All right. Uh, Carol, I'm sure you're very nice, but there's no way that Meredith Grey is the best TV character. It's a stupid answer. <laughs> She's a stupid woman. It's a stupid answer. I found out that that show is still going. Yeah. The yeah. Day. How, what is it? It's 20 something season like, like i was in high school when it started yeah. and i assume you you have nothing to say to back meredith gray i have not watched a single episode yeah. of gray's anatomy Good ever man. yeah I've, and actually I've the seen... only reason i even know that is just because gray and gray's anatomy yeah, it goes, like, yeah. yeah. otherwise i wouldn't even know yeah, yeah i would like watch it first because it was like the hip thing and then i hated it and then when i was married like my ex-wife watched it quite a bit so i saw episodes yeah. here and there which some of like the medical emergencies were interesting yeah. but uh, it's just been going on way too long all medical procedures procedurals are like fine they're formulaic they're like cop shows like mm -hmm. they're great to turn your brain off but oh. they're not good tv no, even no. though i love them house was good tv yeah house same, same problem yes. same problem where it yeah. draws out too long but yeah because um, the last really few like seasons house. were like mm. i can think of better characters just on gray's anatomy from the limited things i've watched True. but you know what carol if watching <laughs> meredith gray makes you happy that's all that matters this one uh lund would be could better explain this because i didn't really watch this show jillian said uh jean ralphio from parks and rec i know that's uh what's yeah. his name ben schwartz yeah who is is really good and i've seen a little bit of of his character in that but i, I couldn't comment on it that's a good show with solid characters that ended about when it should have so yeah i would agree with that i never watched parks and rec but i just watched the last of us so nick offerman is in the last of us Yes. And plays a gay character who is the complete opposite of his like of yes. manly. Ron, Ron Swanson, and, yeah. yeah, you yeah. only eat meat and like vegetarians yeah. are weak and all that. Oh. I, like I was so blown away by that, and he He's did got it range. so yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he actually so well. yeah. as like a human being is yeah. like mm. really and lovely. I can't believe Ron Swanson didn't come up as an answer because yeah. you don't even yeah. need to watch the show because he's in so many memes and he's yeah. just so like he's like it a cultural perfect. phenomenon. Yeah, he's the best character and in that. He show, might be. I think he's one of the best actors around right yeah. now honestly i think he is most excellent uh david going back a little bit and the guy we're uh, staring at right now here in the studio mm -hmm. a very uh, popular picture but uh, uh until he did his stand-up uh, you know as uh, <laughs> the, the actor not the character but kramer kramer i think was a little a little bit groundbreaking maybe not groundbreaking but he definitely stood out yeah i mean the seinfeld was a phenomenon mm -hmm. in its time. I have so. to feel like anyone who likes our podcast for some reason has to like Seinfeld, yeah, right? Because that's the same. Diagram. It's basically, it's Seinfeld is proof that you don't need to have like a good story necessarily to be a good show. Yeah. Right? It doesn't have to be like this huge drawn out thing from episode to episode. It's just be entertaining and be relatable. Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. We're the Seinfeld. Yeah. Also sad no one said Larry David, it's character from Curb Your Enthusiasm, because I think that's uh, up there. And then Aaron said in, in the, the Seinfeld vein, George Costanza, yeah. who also, I just, I mean, I think he has some of the funniest like bits, I guess, and quotes and whatever. But as a full character, I would not put him. as yeah. a human being. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Shane said uh, Walter White. Which is that that one's hard to argue with, yeah. especially just, I mean, when you look at acting ability by Brian Cranston, but turns out what a piece of shit. Yeah. 
I mean, he was going through a hard time. Yeah, yeah. he had cancer. Yeah, but no, but that what he turned the into. The U.S. That didn't medical come from system nowhere. really should did, yeah. actually That's... take a seat there. Kevin, please tell me you've seen Breaking Bad. Uh, I watched the first episode and then I didn't get any oh, further. Oh, okay, that one. The next series you start, I promise you, you will not be. No, I, I know. It's just like I don't know. I haven't committed to it. Yeah. Because and uh, it wasn't even on my list to mention, but then from that to Saul Goodman, another incredible character. Yes. Yeah. I was reading a thing today that uh, they were saying um, um, Bob Odenkirk. Yes, yeah. Bob Odenkirk. He apparently had a massive heart attack on the yeah. set, like yeah. two months before the final episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And was like his heart stopped beating for eighteen seconds or something, yeah. and then he came back two months later and filmed that final episode, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah. yeah. That show is unbelievable. I can't believe you haven't Both watched that, Kevin. Yeah, and like, and no Emmys for Better Call Saul, which was. Ridiculous. I couldn't, but, I couldn't get through that show. It was, no, too, it was so boring. The, oh, first season, yeah. the first season was so boring. Yeah, it gets really good. And the, the Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad, probably the two best series finales of all time. I might have to try they that both one. They both were both wrapped. Yeah. yeah, you you watch you watch Better Call Saul, Kevin. You watch both. And, and uh, you I'm get gonna, on Archer. Yes, and then I'm going to probably watch Breaking Bad again, too. Uh, Ashley and Josh, this feels like, and this is, again, I this is the one I disagree with the most uh, because I think it's just trendy to like him, and I actually think he's a terrible character. Uh, Michael Scott. Yeah, I it's hard I think there's too much forced cringe humor for me. That's a thing, like... Funny. I really love Steve Carell, but mm-hmm. like, well acted. I, yeah, I just wouldn't. I wouldn't. Honestly, put them I think up if there. you're picking a character from The Office, it's Dwight, and right? and that's yes. exactly what Mark and Angela both said. Perfect. Was Dwight, and like, but I like. I'm a little. I'm just a little more subtle guy, and then you'll you'll see with uh, my pick for the best character of all time. But with with Michael Scott, it was like it was an unbelievable level of cringe. It wasn't just yeah. exaggerated. It was like there's no human beings on earth that would do some of this stuff. Where Dwight was just like wonderfully weird. Yeah. yeah. But I, and I just like the characters like a you know like a Stanley. <laughs> Or just like, oh, right? Yes. Or just, he was just so Creed. subtly. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Creed, Creed wasn't subtle, but right. Like, and I, I've only watched that show through once and I just, and I had trouble getting through it because. The it, secondhand it, embarrassment. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Michael Scott, like I said, there's a lot of funny moments, but it was just a little overdone yeah. for me personally. But I also can completely understand why people might think he's the best. Yeah. There's some great quotes too. I mean, that, that come from him. Yeah. Are you, are you an office guy? I can't remember. No, I've watched, I've watched some episodes yeah. of it, but it's the ones I have seen like there's there is some epic stuff from that show right sure. like the the gym impersonator that comes in yes. like the, uh, the Asian guy yeah Asian gym. I saw a meme of that today because it was like happy birthday gym or whatever and it was yeah, yeah. the first few seasons had well, I shouldn't say that like once they found their footing and mm-hmm. kind of divorced themselves from what had happened in the UK version once Steve Carell got his hair plugs and like everything <laughs> got better <laughs> There were some like yeah. brilliant seasons, but yeah. and I would agree at least with Mark and Angela that Dwight is the best character yeah. on that show, yeah. and because it's like I don't know, it's still over the top, but for some reason it's like a more believable. We've over all the worked top. with somebody who's been a little bit because like it's that. not like I don't know. I just find Michael said like nobody is that ignorant to how offside they are. No, I think I don't know. I don't well, know anyone like that. The, the, I know some Dwights. Kayleen, uh, kind of a, an off the board one, but uh, again, if you kind of go back to, uh, well, more when TV was different, but uh, she said Al Bundy, who uh, <sighs> Kevin probably doesn't even know who that is, married with children. It was uh, just, it was just a different time. It was too. a great show in its time, but yeah, like. I and, thought he was a terrible actor in that show, though. I forget what's the guy's Ed, name, Ed O'Neill. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's a little bit one note. Yeah. as an actor in general oh, he's but way like, better in modern family yeah films. yeah that that yeah. show now would like granted this is applicable to a lot of things that show yeah. now would never pass right like no. all, the, all the fat jokes and Even all the other would like, pass yeah. now yeah no. so it was new al bundy in its time i honest i think it's hilarious yeah personally but i don't mm-hmm. i'm not i don't get offended by it no you have to either. take so, everything no. with a grain of salt yeah no you take yeah. it with a grain of yeah. salt yeah. i just wouldn't that's, call that's him what it is right but character but he's he's not a very deep character right like it's just it's just kind of bad you know but let's Let's talk about how a man who sold shoes could afford a lifestyle like that. Yeah, well, that's again, that's a different time. And that's TV. <laughs> that's the same thing as like they wake up and seem to have four hours before work to make like this huge breakfast every day. That's it's true. all unrealistic. In that vein too, Gail said maybe the most offside character of all time, Archie Bunker. I can't believe that she would say that. But and but you go back to the time, right? And he was like the most popular. Oh yeah, I have an Archie Bunker 
card game. Yeah. And that's just how that's just how things work. Yeah. Today, and not so much. Mm. And then I actually said basically almost the complete opposite of Archie Bunker was a David Rose, which was like Dan Levy in uh, Shit's Creek, who was so, like everything the opposite of what like an Archie Bunker would be. This is also when I was kind of thinking about what my answer would be. Shit's Creek is one of the few shows that takes these characters that are so over the top, preposterous, all of the things and through a short run, because they had a limited series rather than dragging it out, which they could have done, the characters get more real. They get more depth. They evolve. They become fully actualized humans through it. And I think that that kind of character development is actually what makes great TV mm-hmm. characters, yes. that they didn't get more sticky. They didn't lean into the silliness. They just became better. And so, honestly, any of the characters on Shit's Creek, mm-hmm. I would put up there. Moira Rose. Oh, yeah, my heart forever. Yeah. So, that was that was it, I think, for, for our list, or for, sorry, for the list of uh, people's comments. Uh, for me, I had a couple. Uh, one, and this is what kind of triggered this, is I think there's the trendy show right now is Nobody Wants This mm-hmm. with Kristen Bell and Adam Brody, who his character, I don't know if any of you watched that Not show yet. yet. His character is excellent, like maybe the smoothest talking rabbi of all time. But uh, then I think back to Seth Cohen in the OC mm-hmm. and for what it was. And again, that even in just four seasons, like that show got bad quick. Yeah. Uh, but that was one for me. And no one mentioned anyone from Modern Family because I think Phil Dunphy is up there. As I, one that of was the going to be one was of my yours? answers. Yeah. As soon as we brought up Al Bundy, that got yeah. me thinking of Modern Family. I was like, Phil Dunphy is hilarious. Hilarious. Again, like over the top, but also just like the best dad of all time. Like, yeah. And I just like uh, that. He, well, okay. He's a pretty good dad. In the no. Show. Yeah. Uh, yeah he's the just, most like dad dad yeah. of all time. He's is a very he? dad dad. But he just, he just <laughs> loves. And it's, uh, you know, this is again, another one that is like Boyle from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which I can't believe no one mentioned anyone from that show. But they just are unapologetically themselves and they love what they love. Yeah. But if you're looking for people. a great dad, shouldn't it be Hal from uh, Malcolm in the oh. Oh, okay, yes, yeah. Very different from uh, from uh, Walter White. Yes, but, yeah. but in the Phil Dunphy vein. Yes, I think Phil mm-hmm. Dunphy was definitely inspired yeah. by how. Yes. See, and there's so many good answers for that too. It, but uh, again, I mentioned no one said anyone from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which I think they're all characters. I will argue to the death, and no one will ever convince me otherwise, that Captain Holt is not the single Agreed. best TV character of all time. Because it's just like, never before has like a, someone trying to play, now when I say a straight man, I mean, because he obviously plays a, a, a gay cop, <laughs> but like just the the no nonsense, like the way he plays yeah. and like plays up his, like just how boring he is. And then when he mixes in those moments of like actual humor, oh, yeah. I just I just think he's the best character. Uh, he has a lot of growth throughout the show and mm-hmm. then just like inspires a lot of growth too. And very sad when Andre Brown passed away but to yes. see a guy who was pretty big hard ass on homicide life on the street to then reappear in like this comedy as no. i yeah I, you can never convince me otherwise that he's not the best tv character of all time i will see your captain holt and i will raise you the hot priest from fleabag oh i haven't seen that show which apparently the hot priest from fleabag is yes. apparently inspired like the Adam Brody's yes. hot rabbi and nobody yes. wants this. Yeah. If you know, you know. Now, is, is he actually a good hot? character? Or is he just he's a He's a great priest? character. Yeah. Uh, the actor, uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, Scott, something Scott. Anyways. Um, British, American? British or oh. Irish or Scottish. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. I haven't looked into the... Anyways, he's an incredible actor, but also Fleabag is a wonderful show. I think I've talked about it on here before, but it's super interesting if you look at it from like the dichotomy of a, a priest who's clearly in love with a woman, uh, but also remaining faithful to God, but just like, oh, he's so hot and the Did, things he says and it's so clever. And So nobody wants this. It sounds like just ripped off Fleabag. Uh, not, I, not, have, I haven't watched Nobody yeah. Wants This, but yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's very good garbage TV, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Whereas Fleabag is, uh, is just a really incredible yeah. show. Fleabag herself could be one of the best characters. Honestly, Larry David in Curb Curb. is like one of my all time favorites. Like that show, I've had more belly laughs watching that show (laughs) than I think any other show. And like the funny thing with him is he's so just like, he says what so many people are thinking but would never ever say or do or whatever. And just some of the like coincidences that he gets caught Mm in, he takes the shoes from the Holocaust. That's exactly (laughs) exactly the one I was thinking of. That's just so... All his hijinks. Yeah, it's just so (laughs) 
unbelievable. And it's like um, his great, what is it? His aunt or someone's it's his, great uncle. He, he, or, so he's dating the lady that he despises so he can get out of the, um, somebody fell into his pool. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so he's trying to get the rules around pools changed. And oh, and so he had to hire the girl for his sitcom that he didn't want. Like yeah. the chain of events, that show is so brilliantly yes. written. Like it's definitely one of my favorite shows of all time. Oh, yeah. I love it. And it's just, it's down. a lot of things that it's just like the everyday, like things that we like almost put up with socially that we should also helped solve well it didn't help solve a murder it helped acquit a, acquit a guy yes yeah. that's a crazy what's i don't think it's still on netflix but i did watch that documentary where yeah. because they were filming an episode of curb your enthusiasm at i think it was like a red it, sox yeah, game. Do- gave- dodgers game I dodgers yeah. game but oh yeah it would be but they they proved that the guy couldn't have been at the murder because he was at they yeah. found him like at the ball game, which is yeah unintentional consequence of that show. But I, I, I yeah I would put Larry David at the top too, especially because it's funny because he's like an over actor in the best way in that show, but he's also not really acting. Exactly. Well, and even yeah. even some of the like the women that he pulls right, like he's an awful looking guy. Like he's yeah. got terrible hair and like yeah. <laughs> and he's pulling these like gorgeous like blonde women and whatever like his wife in the show and stuff. And it's just the whole oh, thing. Yeah, I'm a big fan of her the whole premise of that show is i mean i, I, I love that but show. Like, i think he's such a i would writer. larry david sure well that's a kind of a weird take aaron but okay you griff both be uh, <laughs> lose your hair lose yeah. all your hair no, and grow your saying, sides long now if he was like a normal man that i ran into i don't think so but as larry david yeah. oh okay yeah. so you're just a you're just a star fucker then yes 100 percent. all right that's fair yeah I would also like to say, in terms of great characters, Opie from um, Sons of Anarchy. I'm not. I'm not ready to talk about. <laughs> no, me neither. And that's why. Spoiler alert. He's a great character. Yeah, Opie. He's the the guy who was the um uh, the Long guy who hair, got paralyzed in Remember the Titans. Oh. Like that. Oh, okay. Actor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Phenomenal. Yeah. We watched that during phenomenal. COVID. So that was a long time ago for me. Phenomenal yeah. character. That was a good, yeah. good yeah. series. And, and that is, that is, and it, you look, spoiler alert, but that is still, I don't think many people would disagree that that's the hardest death to watch in and TV I, history. And I stopped watching the show after that because, yeah, yeah. Good. so. It, how it did, also got bad. How yes. did Opie die? Because like he I got <laughs> murdered in prison. He like sacrificed himself. Yeah. All I remember is like watching the last few episodes of that show. The last few episodes of that show were horrendously yeah. traumatizing. No, like yeah. his wife gets stabbed in the back of the head by his mom oh, or yeah. whatever. And oh, then like Gemma is also another oh, one of the worst characters. Oh my God. The last yeah. few episodes of that show were insane. But like she yeah. acts oh. amazing. She was. Yeah. She is one of the. Katie Yeah. I have what's all PTSD from that. But, and Speaking then, of Katie Siegel. Peg, Peg yeah, Bundy. Bundy. But, yeah. Right. But who also also was like scum in the earth like in in that show in married with children like she was just as shitty as hell she's in (laughs) she's in everything man like she's leela oh she's an unbelievable actor uh, fun fact but ryan was talking about white buffalo yes he does a lot of the music in sons of anarchy like the song come join the murder at the very end that that's white buffalo but anyways kevin i know it took one of yours but you got to have one more yeah actually i really liked your captain hold answer because he's phenomenal honorable mention to boyle though because boil everyone needs a boil in their life he's just so Which, weird. like the person True, not the skin condition <laughs> yeah. um i'm gonna say one that hasn't been mentioned yet is uh ruth langmore from ozark wow yeah that's a yeah Maybe a deep cut. No, but no. Is that I, the wife? Or? No, 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 that's no, no. like that's the, the curly blonde, blonde girl. girl. Yeah, I only she. Got a couple I think she just that show. like they just casted her so she perfectly, was, she like was this really tiny blonde girl that just like is from the south and has no filter and, and is just, just has, the most is like just trying to survive, just like the most badass like yeah. trailer park girl you've ever met in your she life. Is, yeah, uh, yeah, she was. I liked her. I was rooting for her. Mm. And yeah, then I need to watch that show. Another so one that like I don't, I don't think people would think of it as like a best character because he's he's a villain, but one that came to mind was Homelander from oh, the boys. Yeah, except he's a piece of shit in real life. Is he? I mean, yeah. yeah but I'm trying to like yeah, but separate he, it is that. Very he well was done. But like two minutes and without a paddle though at the beginning oh, when yeah, he was yeah. the friend that died. Okay. Yeah, yeah. but I, I don't know. That was one that came to mind yeah. of just like the character that he plays in the show yes. is like so good and it is and actually a very yeah, yeah it is a very nuanced character yeah so for so that was what it is. that was my other thought That'd be hard yeah. to play too but unless you're actually a piece yeah. of shit yeah i guess <laughs> i didn't know that fun yeah. fact but we always get all the hollywood gossip <laughs> from you so it's nice boy that was, yeah that was an even longer conversation than i expected but a, a fun one and maybe we will next time do worst characters yeah 
Most oh. of them are on that list you read. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but uh, thank you, as always, to everyone who participated in our latest deer call. As always, uh, keep your eyes open for our deer call on Instagram and Facebook, and then comment uh, for your chance to win a gift card from Cilantro and Chive. All right. Now, yeah, Kevin, I just uh, put a box on the table, and the athlete is a very upset. But uh, again, we were trying to think of a game to do tonight, and uh, you know what? I just... Jesus. You're being a real Riley right now, Aaron, <laughs> making a bunch of noise. But uh, we thought, especially because uh, co-worker Aaron and Andrew both have not played this game. And I think sometimes, I think this is uh, the redemption tour for the athlete. So this is this is Gad Mabs, because we don't want to get sued, the redemption tour. So we're going to do Mad Gabs again. I feel like, Kevin, maybe this time you might know a little more, like, what to how to make your brain work. But uh, we're all going to do it. Aaron, you got out of it last time. We're going to make you do one this time and pretty simple uh the person who uh, gets the least amount right and if it's a tie then you're just gonna have to split it but has to bring treats next time to next recording for everyone who's here right now yeah so dustin lund walsh tough luck yeah i gotta say i prefer to be the game master because i'm bad at a lot of the games we play this i'm feeling very overconfident about okay oh i think overconfident is the key so yeah, yeah, yeah and it's pretty straightforward we can get right into it we're just gonna go one at a time we have do we do a minute is I a minute so. enough a minute yeah. clock. a minute and uh you get one pass uh and you get as as many as you possibly can andrew i assume you like you weren't there that episode but i think nah, you I know how to, to play this yeah. yeah uh one skip per person one skip per person yeah okay and then who wants to go first no i will go first <laughs> okay so we got a minute. Coworker Aaron, very overconfident going I'm actually first. feeling like I'm really regretting saying that I'm good at this. So okay. sorry, mom. Here we go. In three, two, one. Seen curse swim. Sink or swim. Share oh runs tone. Sharon Stone. Oh, wow. Okay. Hey, stray cat. A stray cat. These seem easier than the ones you pulled off the internet. <laughs> Gap Den America. Captain America. Oh, my God. <laughs> NYPD, NYPD, NYPD. We were in <laughs> AP Streety. Oh, uh, that one AP doesn't Street, count. Okay. Uh, steakhouse. St steakhouse. Oh, shit. That's only 35 seconds. <laughs> USA. USA. <laughs> Hope Inner Road. Uh, Hope Inner Road. Uh, Hope Inner Road. Inner Road. 10 seconds. Hope. Hope Inner Road. Hope in a road. Hope in her ode. Hope in her ode. Time. Hope in her ode. Open road. Ugh, I had road, but I couldn't figure out the open. That was, okay, that was, that was very annoying. That was a, a lot. Fucking Aaron's Aaron. not bringing treats. <laughs> I think she read this ahead of time. Four. <laughs> she cheated. Seven. Jesus. You also only had like two word ones too. The ones That's you pulled off the reason. internet were. Hey, but you yeah. know what? Hey, I, I did my job and I got the official... <laughs> Gab Mads yes. game from the thrift store. So no more knockoff internet bullshit. Mm. All right. Now who wants to follow that? <laughs> Not me. Okay. I'll go. What if I do really well then? It's just putting the pressure on even more. I already know I'm if, in, I'm bottom two and probably not the, <laughs> probably not second hey, last. So you never know. Then we just go harder next time. <laughs> time to laugh at that. Okay. Three, two, one. Shuck hog o cubs. Chicago Cubs. Law school. Law school. Law school. Oh, I yelled that. A gas tank. A gas tank. Sand tough hay. Santa Fe. These ones are easier. <laughs> Par Kevin who? Park Avenue. These are like all places. Oh, no. Surfaced Asian. <laughs> oh, no. Surfaced Asian. Service station? Yeah. No. Spore it skier. Spore it skier. Spore it Sports gear. Sports gear. Okay. Oak A babe. <laughs> okay, babe? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh height hex tough. Height hex tough. Height hex. Height hex. Height hex tough. Something stuff. Height hex stuff. Oh, I'm not gonna get it. High tech stuff. High tech stuff. Oh, you might wow. have beat me. One, cool. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. eight. Wow. Teddy for no the win. treats. <laughs> Well, I know I get treats, but I don't have to pay for them. Pressure's on, Strybosh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Who wants to go now? Well, I think I have to go so we can yeah, make Kevin go last. Just let me go last. Okay. 
Okay, Aaron, you can watch the time. You guys okay. set a high standard here. I don't know what that. These are these are easier. Yeah, for them, our listening some audience, were, some of them there. I was shouldn't let the on. nerds go first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're racking. Sorry, I speak English good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, ready? Three, two, one. Up your shoot. Up your shoot. A parachute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Al tenth of snow. Al tenth of snow. It's a little tougher. A tenth of snow. Uh, I don't know. You get it. one pass, okay? A cam rub hug. A cam rub hug. He's got some he shitty did ones. You did get harder ones. A cam rub hug. Close. A cam rug hug. Rub hug. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's like not even like, a real thing. No, should we skip? Yeah. Okay, we're giving you a skip on that one. That's we're going to give you an extra 10 A seconds. camera bug is not a real thing. No. A pose guard. This is a real a thing. A pose guard. A pose guard. A point guard? Nope. A pose guard. A pose. A hose guard? Mm-hmm. Pose guard. A pose guard. Pose guard. Sometimes letters are missing. Pose guard. Frick, Give it I don't five know. five more seconds. Yeah. A pose guard. Oh, pose guard. I don't know. Oh, Kevin, you got a chance. It was a postcard. A po- <laughs> 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 Come on. <laughs> How did you get this is rigged? You guys got like the easiest ones ever. We did a camera bug was BS. a camera bug? Yeah. yeah. What is and that even supposed to mean? I don't know. But you were saying it. Uh, oh, you got some for Kevin? I'm gonna spit yeah. Is it weird treats? that I'm nervous? <laughs> no, you're the athlete. <laughs> what you're did I get? Nervous. Two? One? Did I only get one? You got two for sure, I think. No. You did great. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Aaron. I think you only got one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'm making wow. this table real squeaky. Yeah. All right. Three, two, one. Main cheat hog. Oh no. <laughs> main cheat hog. Main main cheat dog. Main cheat do- uh Don't say it again. <laughs> something dog. Yeah. yeah. Main she Yeah. That. Hey, don't help. Main him. she? What's a main she dog? Main <sighs> Okay, fuck. <laughs> Skip it. <laughs> Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls. Okay. A smiley face. A smiley face. A smiley face. <laughs> check in chill. Check in chill. Check in chill. Check. Uh, check. Oh, check in heel. I can't even read. <laughs> he doesn't get a vote. He can't even read. <laughs> check in. Check and in heel. Time. Jack and Jill. Oh, That's yeah. two though. And it was oh. a mangy dog. Okay. You were saying. Yeah. I feel like I should get a redo. Would you would you like one? Yeah, I would. Okay. I feel like I can beat Ke- I feel like I can beat two. And go. Hits a crime. It's a crime. Arraigned he lay. Arraigned he lay? Arraigned he lay. Oh, a rain delay. <laughs> a butter. A butter. Another? A putter. A putter? Elf, elf habit hoops. Elf habits hoops. Oh god, I can't even read it. Elf habits hoop. Elf habit habits hoop. <laughs> elf habits hoop. Oh, I don't know. Skip that one. Alphabet soup. Oh god. Right. Oh, allow yeah. seek rook. Allow seek crook. Oh, okay. Right, you're getting better. Pretty shack scent. Pretty shack scent. British accent. Gas powered. Gas powered. <laughs> Gas powered. <laughs> Ape arrow faces. Ape arrow faces. Ape Time. Arrow. A pair of aces. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. See, I did do better. Yeah. As long as oh, I didn't get a man. ridiculous Too bad that was the unofficial there. one. Six. Should we, should we go? Six the unofficial. Yeah, like Kevin, I, Kevin go again. Let's see how this again. goes. You did get better, like better. Yeah. The other one was like, it's uh, like it's snowy or snow outside. I don't know. Those ones are hard. All right. Remember when we thought this was going to be a short episode? Just extra redemption three for Kevin. Three hours of yeah. madcap. <laughs> and go. Okay, dad. Okay, dad. Oh. Egg ram muff hat. Egg ram muff hat. Egg ram muff hat. See, it helps when you hold on to certain words. He just keeps saying muff. it aloud. Egg ram muff hat. Egg ram muff hat. Skip it. Up late ink card. A playing ink. You just what? said it. A playing card. Yeah. yeah. Playing card. <laughs> May kick week. <laughs> May kick week. Are you May saying kick. that wrong? Word? I said it wrong. I said it wrong. You said it wrong. <laughs> May, May kick, kick quick. So uh, May kick quick. Make it, make it quick. Uh, eight he ui. Eight he ui. Eight, eight he 
U I eighty three seconds eighty U I. I like when people say it like they're saying it right, but they don't know what they're saying. Yeah, a, a DUI. DUI. Oh, a DUI. And the other one was a gram of fat. Okay. Which you just whispered to yourself yeah. a lot. <laughs> you a gram did. of fat. A gram of well, fat. Well, unofficially, oh. Andrew, you beat Kevin, but officially, Strybosh got a bit of redemption there. Uh, so, and Andrew oh, probably will miss the next those. three episodes, but... Uh, no, it's winter now. I've, I've oh, you're, a lot yeah. more free time, and I'm not coaching hockey this year. So oh, no. Okay. Oh, so, we will see you anyway. again. Perfect. So, we get any kind of food is fine, as long as uh, Dustin, London, Walsh don't get it. But, hey, uh, good job, Kevin. Uh, especially in the second round, you, you did a, li- a little bit better. It's... It is, it's, I don't know, your brain definitely has to work a certain way for that game, I find. But uh, at least, Andrew, you put your money where your mouth was that you could do better, and you did. But uh, that just about does it for this episode. So as always, uh, let's wrap things up with everyone's final thoughts. Uh, big fan of Mad Gabs, Gab mm-hmm. Mads. Uh, would love to play more. So you can come in second place again. Hey, I did great. You did, yeah. In one try. Yeah. I set a precedent. Rigged. Easy. <laughs> if you're hosting a game night, and you're playing Gab Mads, I'm not coming. That's, that's fair. <laughs> I, yeah. You don't want to get it wrong again? You're you're good at <laughs> everything just, but this. Yeah. Honestly. His brain's not very words hard. <laughs> I mean, I felt like I read half of the things wrong because I'm trying to hear stuff before yeah. I even like yeah. read it. Make it quick. And then it just, yeah, it just, I don't know. It makes me feel like I'm bad hey. at the English. But you really contributed today with the horse poop talk. Yes. And I yeah. appreciate that. That's what I'm good at. Yes. You know? And yeah. if we, yeah. if we had any kind of physical competition which is not what podcasts are about you do well exactly yeah yeah so we'll see what next episode you are very good at i don't know why i feel like i need to gas you up here but like when it comes to puns and stuff you're great (laughs) you're just not a mad gabber or a gab matter and that's fine but But you matter to us (laughs) and we're gonna keep playing it and you're gonna keep losing so that's okay at least it, it didn't ruin your night this time though no Okay. I feel like I'm contributing. Okay. At least. <laughs> welcome to the table, Kevin. <laughs> I think you've been here more than me, but either way. Hey, well, welcome both. Was that your final thought? No. Um, you know what? I had a great time. Mm-hmm. We don't need Lund. No. No. Um, well. Well, yeah. But we do, but yeah. we don't. I miss the guy. I mean, yeah. I, I like him. But um, we took it off the rails enough without yeah. him. And great deer call. If this episode sucks, it's Lund's fault. Yeah. Fair. No, I think I think we can do this with any mix of people. Like we always miss Dustin, we always miss Walsh, and we certainly miss Lund, but also we still had a great time. Mm-hmm. This is true. Yeah. And so. there's still less editing to do without Lund here. That's fair. And we all get treats next time and they don't. Yeah. So, hey, that is it. That is uh, bring, that is brings to, I did all my good talking with <laughs> Admabs. Uh, that brings to an end another episode of Oh Dear. As always, now make sure you follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. You can check out more content on our YouTube page. And thank you, as always, to our presenting sponsor, Bose Bar and Stage. And of course, to Riley and Ryan for having us once again at Communal Creative Studios. It was a lot of fun to be here with both of them tonight and a huge thank you to Ryan for sitting down and chatting with us. And uh, yeah, good luck, Ryan, as you head out on another tour with Matt Good. Uh, that is just uh, so damn cool. That uh, uh, Just a cool guy doing cool guy yeah. shit. Can't say that enough. Uh, of course, last but not least, thank you to you for tuning in once again, whether it's the podcast or on Rogers TV. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, for co-worker Aaron, Andrew Russell, and the athlete Kevin Strybosch. I'm Ted Emmett and we'll see you next time. Who wants to say a dumb Lund thing at the end? No, that's just for Lund. What's his like what's his what's what's his catchphrase? Like waka waka or something like that? <laughs> Woozle wazzle. <laughs> Perfect. Wrap it up. All right. It's like he was here. <laughs>